हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन द टुडे सेशन वी विल डिस्कस फार्माकोलॉजी ऑफ द जॉक्सन एंड इट्स रोल इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर नाउ एज वी ऑल नो कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर इज अ फेलियर ऑफ हार्ट टू पंप सफिशियंट अमाउंट ऑफ ब्लड टू फुलफिल द मेटाबॉलिक डिमांड्स ऑफ बॉडी टिश्यूज एंड ऑर्गन्स पंपिंग एफिशियंसी ऑफ हार्ट इज रिड्यूज इन कंजेस्टिव हार्ट फेलियर एंड देर इज फॉल इन द कार्डिक आउटपुट now due to fall in cardiac output there is accumulation of fluids around the around the lungs and edema throughout the body termed as systemic edema due to the retention of sodium and water now cardiac function is impaired uh, due to myocardial ischemia or myocardial infarction or because of cardiomyopathy the uh, the joxin is a cardiotonic uh, the joxin increases force of contraction of cardiac muscles cardiac output is increased without proportionate increase in oxygen oxygen consumption and increase in cardiac output improves tissue perfusion there's a compensatory mechanisms triggered by the heart uh, like for example activation of uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system to increase the cardiac output are inactivated and there is also withdrawal of the sympathetic overactivity diuresis clears edema caused due to sodium and water retention it is also because of the improved cardiac output and uh, uh, there is fall in the pulmonary edema fall in the pulmonary edema improves dyspnea and cyanosis also disappears because of the increase in cardiac output now let's discuss the mechanism of action of uh, digoxin uh, this is a figure of a normal contractile cardiomyocyte now let's see how a cardiac uh, cell contracts normally now during the phase 4 of action potential the resting membrane potential of the of a cardiac cell of a, a contractile cardiac cell is found to be minus 90 millivolts and the cell shows normal polarity the cell shows normal polarity means that uh, uh, there is a more of a potassium concentration Uh, inside the cell where is the concentration of sodium and calcium is more outside the cell so during the phase 4 of action potential the cell shows a resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolts and the polarity of the cell is normal now influx of sodium and influx of calcium increases the membrane potential from minus 90 millivolts it rises to plus 10 millivolts and that results in the depolarization uh, Uh, depolarization is a phase zero of action potential so because of the depolarization there is influx of sodium and influx of calcium inside the cell so this uh, influx of calcium the calcium calcium binds to the rhinodyne receptors and induces release of calcium from sar sarcoplasmic reticulum and this calcium induced calcium release causes muscle contraction as it is observed during the plateau phase Uh, that is a phase 2 of action potential now at the end of the phase 3 of action potential there is more of uh, sodium and calcium inside the cell and the polarity of the cell is re is reversed so now uh, we have more of sodium and more of calcium because of the influx of sodium and calcium there is more of the intracellular sodium and calcium inside the cell whereas the concentration of uh, potassium is more outside the cell so uh, in order to uh, attain the normal polarity uh, there is activation of uh, sodium potassium atpase pump and uh, ex excess of uh, sodium ions excess of sodium ions are transported outside the cell in exchange of potassium ions and further increase uh, in uh, uh, excess intracellular calcium uh, is also Uh, partly removed by its uptake into sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, which is mediated by uh, sarcoplasmic uh, sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium atpase and apart from this this calcium is also removed uh, from the cell um, by the activation of uh, sodium calcium exchanger which uh, removes calcium uh, from the cell so calcium is Uh, transported outside the cell in exchange of the sodium ions so uh, by the end of the phase 4 again uh, the cell shows a membrane potential a resting membrane potential of minus 90 millivolts and the cell again retains its 
uh, normal polarity. So this is how a normal uh, contractile cardiomyocyte contracts. Now digoxin, digoxin is a cardiotonic. It increases force of contraction of cardiac muscles. Uh, it is used in the management of congestive heart failure. So now let's see how uh, digoxin uh, acts as an inotropic agent. How digoxin increases force of contraction of the cardiac muscles in the in congestive heart failure. So digoxin inhibits sodium potassium ATPase pump. So digoxin inhibits sodium potassium ATPase pump. And because of the inhibition of sodium potassium ATPase pump, sodium ions are not thrown outside the cell. And this results in increase in uh, intracellular sodium ion concentration. Now, because of the inhibition of sodium potassium ATPase pump, there is reduced functioning of sodium calcium exchanger. And since there is reduced functioning of uh, sodium calcium exchanger, calcium is also not transported outside the cell. And this builds up intracellular uh, calcium concentration. And excess calcium is taken up by the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, in the presence of uh, digoxin, uh, there is increase in uh, intracellular calcium concentration and this calcium is taken up or it is stored it gets stored up in the sarcoplasmic reticulum so during subsequent depolarization more calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that results in increased force of contraction so uh, because of the increase in the intracellular ca uh, calcium concentration uh, there is uh, increased storage of uh, calcium uh, in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and more calcium is released uh, from the sarcoplasmic reticulum during subsequent depolarization and that increases the force of contraction of cardiac muscles that increases the cardiac contractility. So, digoxin increases the force of contraction of cardiac muscles in a patient suffering from congestive heart failure. And that is why uh, it is very useful in increasing the cardiac output. Now let's study the pharmacological actions of digoxin. First is the effect on heart, positive inotropic effect. Uh, this we have already discussed in detail during the mechanism of action. Uh, digoxin causes dose dependent increase in the force of contraction of cardiac muscles. Digoxin also shows the negative chro uh, chronotropic effect. Uh, digoxin decreases the heart rate. Now, improved uh, circulation because of the increase in cardiac output increases the diminished vagus nerve activity. And due to increase in the vagus nerve activity, there is decrease in the heart rate. Uh, digoxin also shows a negative uh, dromotropic effect. Uh, digoxin depresses the SA node as well as the AV node. Now, uh, reduced automaticity of SA node which produces a shortening of action potential is seen uh, because of this uh, dromotropic effect. Apart from this, uh, digoxin reduces conduction speed in the AV node and which causes prolongation of PR interval. So, uh, digoxin produces characteristic changes in the ECG. So, this is a diagram showing the normal ECG. Now, this is the diagram. Uh, showing ECG under the influence of digoxin. As uh, I have already discussed, digoxin causes a shortening of uh, action potential. Uh, it causes prolongation of uh, PR interval. And a very important characteristic feature of digoxin, uh, there is depression of ST segment. ST segment becomes curved. And because of these changes in ECG, uh, digoxin uh, produces uh, arrhythmias. It is uh, capable of uh, producing arrhythmia. It is pro-arrhythmic and uh, uh, which limits its use uh, in the management of uh, CHF. Another effect of, the, of digoxin is the effect on blood vessels. Now, because of the improved circulation, because of the increase in cardiac output, there is a fall in the peripheral resistance, effect on kidneys. And our improved renal perfusion causes diuresis. And this diuresis reduces uh, uh, pulmonary congestion and systemic edema which is caused because of the sodium and water retention. Uh, then the effect of uh, digoxin on central nervous system. High doses stimulates uh, chemoreceptor trigger zone resulting in nausea and vomiting. And still higher doses produces hyper, hyperapnea 
mental confusion disorientation and visual disturbances uh, like for example color vision now coming to the adverse effects of digoxin now due to narrow margin of safety uh, that is the low therapeutic index and profound proarrhythmic effects digoxin has a limited use in the management of congestive heart failure now it shows both extra cardiac as well as cardiac effects extra cardiac adverse effects are anorexia nausea vomiting and abdominal pain apart from this it uh, can also produce fatigue malaise headache mental confusion restlessness hyperapnea disorientation psychosis and visual disturbances now cardiac effect of uh, digoxin is the proarrhythmic effect we have already discussed in detail the effect of digoxin on ecg how there is uh, depression of st segment how it causes uh, uh, shortening of action potential so cardiac produce uh, cardiac effect of uh, digoxin is its uh, proarrhythmic effect and proarrhythmic effect is produced because of uh, increase in intracellular calcium and the shortening of uh, action potential now digoxin can produce partial and complete av block and this block partial or complete av block it may or may not accompany other types of arrhythmias now therapeutic uses of uh, uh, digoxin as we have discussed in detail it is an inotropic agent it increases force of contraction of cardiac muscles and therefore uh, it is useful in the treatment of uh, congestive heart failure so digoxin provides symptomatic relief in uh, systolic dysfunction uh, uh, it is a drug of choice in relieving uh, symptoms and in restoring cardiac output in patients with dilated heart and in patients with low ejection fraction otherwise uh, uh, digoxin is not uh, preferred to be used because of its uh, narrow margin of safety and because of its profound uh, proarrhythmic effect but it is a drug of choice in dilated heart and also in the uh, heart failure which is because of the low ejection fraction apart from the congestive heart failure uh, digoxin is also useful in the treatment of arrhythmias like uh, atrial fibrillation atrial flutter and paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia so this is all about the pharmacology of uh, digoxin uh, it is all about why and how digoxin is useful in the management of uh, of uh, congestive heart failure i uh, hope the session is clear to you thanks for watching the video